This video was brought to you by NordVPN. Last Saturday, the incumbent Speaker of the Slovak Parliament and former Prime Minister Peter Pellegrini pulled off a huge election upset against former Foreign Affairs Minister Ivan Korčok in their bid for the presidency of Slovakia. As the candidate of the current government coalition between his own Hlas party and Prime Minister Robert Fico's Smer, Pellegrini performed better than expected and secured his mandate with a massive 19-point increase in turnout. In terms of the total number of votes, Pellegrini received the strongest support of any president since the first direct election in 1999. Now, given that his campaign centred largely around anti-war rhetoric, primarily concerning the Ukrainian conflict, it looks like Slovakia has now decided definitively that it definitely does not want to continue supporting Kyiv, and this could prove a real headache for both the EU and NATO. So in this video, we're going to ask whether Slovakia is now effectively in the pro-Russian bloc, and what this could mean for the country going forward. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. First, a bit of context. From 2006, Slovak politics were dominated by Prime Minister Robert Fico and his Smer party, winning 44% of the vote and the absolute majority of parliamentary seats in 2012. Due to a number of high-profile scandals, Fico's rule came to an abrupt end, with him resigning his post back in 2018. Fico then appointed his right-hand man, Peter Pellegrini, to replace him as PM, hoping to give their party Smer a chance to freshen up its image. While Fico stayed on as party chairman, Pellegrini was to effectively become the new face of the party in order to appeal to moderate and centrist voters concerned with cost-of-living issues. This set him apart from Fico, whose more divisive style of politics and aggressive rhetoric led to regular spats with the media. Unfortunately for Pellegrini, Smer never quite recovered electorally, and lost the 2020 election to the anti-corruption populist movement, Olano, led by Igor Matovic. After it became clear that Fico would remain in charge of Smer regardless, Pellegrini and his loyalists split off from the party and founded their own Hlas party. We cover more of this in our previous videos on the topic, but in a nutshell, the short period of Olano governments was marked by chaos and constant infighting amongst the movement's coalition partners. The subsequent collapse of the government and early elections late last year saw Fico sweep back into power, with Pellegrini's Halas being its key coalition partner, along with the right-wing nationalist Slovak National Party. While both Smer and Halas describe themselves as social democratic, Smer is generally considered a left-wing nationalist party with socially conservative views, while Halas is more centre-left. Perhaps this is why Fico thought Pellegrini would be a more acceptable candidate for president, after Zuzana Chaputová declared in June that she wouldn't be seeking re-election. After all, Fico himself ran for president 10 years ago, but lost badly due to just how divisive a figure he is. Pellegrini also had the benefit of polling as the most trusted politician in the country, way ahead of Fico and even more than Chaputová. It looks like Fico struck a deal with Pellegrini during prior government negotiations, basically to let Fico be PM and Pellegrini be the coalition's candidate for presidency, with Smer's immediate endorsement of Pellegrini after he declared his candidacy serving as further evidence of this. This presidential election was particularly high stakes because this new FICO government has already raised a few eyebrows with what some describe as an Orban-style takeover of Slovak politics. The government has already introduced legislation that would lower protections for whistleblowers, making Slovakia the only EU country where whistleblower protection requires government approval. There's another bill which significantly lowered punishments for corruption and other financial crimes, and abolished the Special Prosecutor's Office. Opponents to this bill called it an obvious amnesty for Fico and his cronies, and it sparked massive protests in Bratislava. Culture Minister Martina Šimkovičová even proposed a new bill, which would effectively give the government full control over the Slovak state television, RTVS, and fire its current leadership. Šimkovičová, who had previously ran a pro-Russian channel on Facebook, said that this is because RTVS, in its current form, has a liberal bias against the current government. So this meant that if Pellegrini were to win, nothing would stand in the way for the government to implement its controversial reforms. Knowing this, the opposition united around Ivan Korčok, a non-partisan who previously served as Minister of Foreign Affairs and Slovakia's ambassador to the EU and the USA. A committed Atlanticist, Korčok campaigned on maintaining good relations with NATO and continuing to support Ukraine, and mocked Pellegrini as Fico's puppet. 
the election quickly became a de facto referendum on FICO's controversial reforms and Ukraine. In the first round of the vote, Korchok actually beat Pellegrini with 42.5% against his 37%, and Korchok emerged as the bookie's favourite to win the second round. Unfortunately for Ukraine, the second round saw Pellegrini make a huge comeback, winning with over 53% of the vote, against Korchok's 47%. There are three main reasons for this turnaround. Firstly, Pellegrini successfully weaponized the escalating rhetoric about sending NATO troops to Ukraine, and accused Korchok of planning to send Slovak troops to fight against Russia in Ukraine. Even though Korchok never said this, this quickly became the number one topic of the election. Secondly, Pellegrini managed to court the support of nationalists who had voted for Stefan Harabin in the first round, while Harabin, who placed third with 12% of the vote, did not himself endorse Pellegrini, the Slovak National Party and the Republic Party did, which was enough to sway the nationalist vote. Finally, Pellegrini also received a key endorsement from the Hungarian minority party, the Alliance, and saw a major uptick in support from Hungarian-speaking voters. In effect, these endorsements coupled with a general fear of either escalating war in Ukraine or of FICO's complete domination mobilised voters like never before leading to a 19-point increase in voter turnout from the last presidential election. So what does all this mean for Slovakia going forward? Well, without a doubt, it's a huge victory for Robert Fico and his government. When Pellegrini takes office in June, nothing will stand in Fico's way to push his proposed reforms through. In regards to the war in Ukraine, the majority of Slovaks have effectively expressed agreement with the government's policy of curbing military aid to Ukraine, but it's too sensationalist to call the country pro-Russian. When asked for their opinion on foreign leaders, Slovak's perception of both Putin and Zelensky was largely negative, but Putin was even more unpopular. This illustrates the Slovak attitude pretty well. They don't trust either side and their priority is to avoid getting involved. Nonetheless, Slovakia's dovishness might impede further Western support for Ukraine, and Slovakia's democracy is at real risk now that FICO and co control all the levers of power. Now, watching our videos, it's understandable if, at times, you feel like the world isn't terribly safe. And unfortunately, this can be the case online too. You might try your best to keep everything secure, maybe you try to rotate through your favourite passwords online, but that's not always enough to keep you safe. In fact, the most common form of account hacking these days is something called credential stuffing. Essentially, if you use one of your normal passwords on a website that's poorly maintained and then gets compromised, you could find that information landing on the dark web. Then hackers will just attempt the same email and password combination on your social network accounts, streaming services and banks, you get the point. Luckily for you, NordVPN has a whole bunch of tools that can keep you safe online. With their suite of threat protection tools, including a dark web monitor which notifies you if someone leaks your credentials. Their threat protection can also warn you about phishing links and block malicious ads before you even see them. It really is all round protection for your digital life. And if you sign up for a two year plan using our link, you'll not only get a massive discount, but you'll also get four extra months totally free. So if you want to support the channel and improve our journalism, then make sure you use the link in the description so that they know you came from us. And that way, you'll also get their great service at a discount.